Um, so today's focus is going to be rehabilitation and therapy. Um, how many of you know John? Everybody knows John? Big John. John is our uh, head of our therapy department, both in our outpatient clinic and in the facility. So he's going to start by talking a little bit about PTOT and ST and kind of explain the differences. Can y'all hear me okay without this or do I need to use this? Please use it. Okay. Um, well, thank y'all for coming. I appreciate y'all coming. Hopefully, it, I can kind of pass on some uh, useful information that you may or may not know, uh, things that you can kind of be aware of uh, if you ever need our services. I know most of you like knowing that we're here, but you don't really want to see us. I get it. Um, but thank you for thank you for coming. Uh, I know downstairs it was real hot, so uh, we moved up here. And I guess it's a little cool, so I was told to make sure I was full of hot air. <laughs> There's a few people here who will attest that I'm, I can definitely do that. But uh, that being said, um, there's several things I want to touch on, but I want to just kind of be a loose, um, you know, I want to just be up here doing a speech. So, you know, if you have questions, you just feel free to stop me, raise your hand, yell at me, throw something at me. Uh, Suzanne, anything you want to just jump in? Steve, Bernie, just jump in with any questions or anything you want me to elaborate on. Okay, the first thing I want to talk about is the different components of rehabilitation. Physical therapy, occupational therapy, speech. And what do those really compose of? Physical therapy, which is what I am and what Ramil is, and Jeff and uh, some of the other folks downstairs, uh, it's what we are. And then there's occupational therapy. Now, we realize none of you are, but most of you are still not working, but we are not going to get you rehabbed up to send you back to work, so don't worry. I have no idea why they call it occupational therapy, but that's what they call it. Physical therapy and occupational therapy have quite a bit of overlap. So there's a lot of things that physical therapy does that occupational therapy also does. It all goes together. Um, and then I'm also going to talk about inpatient therapy versus the outpatient therapy. The inpatient therapy is the downstairs in healthcare, and this is usually where you're going to get therapy if you've been in the hospital, say, for three or four days. Okay, um, and I'm going to get into the differences of Medicare A and Medicare B. So I'm going to throw a lot of information at you. So again, just lift your hand up. So. Downstairs in the healthcare centers, we're generally where we're doing our, I'll call it acute rehab. It's a little more intense. And then the wellness center up above the bistro is where we have our outpatient therapy gym. And that's more what we, is out, exactly what we call it, outpatient. So you're coming from the cottage, you're coming from the apartments or wherever. And that's less intense, but it's a different focus. And that's usually two or three times a week, okay? So downstairs, in the therapy gym, in the acute rehab, pretty much everything is all geared towards what I'm gonna call functional mobility. It's all geared towards <coughs> getting you back to your previous level of function, getting you back to be able to go home, which is where everybody wants to go. And everybody wants to get better and get better now. I do not have a magic wand, it does take time sometimes. But the goals are, are the functional goals of being able to, for example, get out of bed, be able to stand up, be able to get into a wheelchair, be able to get into a walker, be able to walk a certain amount of distance. But it's also being able to, can you comb your hair? Can you brush your teeth? Can you take yourself to the commode? Can you clean yourself after you've gone to the commode? Can you dress yourself? Can you do all these things safely? Can you do everything that you need to do to get back to hopefully that independent level at the cottage or the high rise? So that's kind of the goal downstairs. Um, <clears throat> so PT. Um, we, our, our main focus, if you will, downstairs is, again, like we talked about, can you get in and out of bed? Can you transfer? Can you walk? Now, generally, to go home, 
the minimal distance that we're going to really want you to be able to walk is at least 50 feet. And that's not a number that I came up with. Somebody smarter than me came up with it. But you really need to be able to walk 50 feet minimal to be in your apartment or your cottage to go from point A to point B. Community distance, which here is a lot longer, but in our minds, it's at least 150 feet. And that's, you know, now there's also a quality of walking that we're looking at. Okay, so if you're sitting there, Walking 50 feet, I'll just fine. No, no, no that, that's, that's not safe. Safety plays a big component. Everything you're going to hear us, if you're in therapy, I'm sure most of you have been in therapy downstairs, have heard me use the word safety, 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 safety. I mean, you know, and I tell patients down there, I want to go home. Yes, I understand that. But I get paid to be overprotective, paranoid, and I'm good at what I do. Because I don't ever want to send somebody home and set them up to fail. Believe it or not, <laughs> we want you to go home and stay home. You can walk by and visit. Yeah, you know, and a lot of a lot of you do. Of course, you don't ever actually come in the door because you're scared we may suck you in. <laughs> yeah, by the way. Um, so that's kind of what PT focuses on. OT focuses more on can you dress yourself. Now everybody focuses on the walking, the walking, the walking. And that's important. But you need to be able to put your shoes on. If you've got hip replacement, putting your pants on, putting shoes on, may be difficult. And trying to do it without affecting the hip surgery you just had. Okay? Can you dress your upper body? Can you put your shoes on? Toilet. That's a big deal. It's a, it's a big deal for cleanliness, for infection control, for dignity. You need to be able, if you go to the commode, to be able to clean yourself and do it safely. You need to be able to, once you have gone and got everything cleaned up, you need to be able to reach down and pull your pants up and make sure this is done. So stand there without holding on to anything and make sure you've got your belt done. And we don't need a demonstration. Do it safe. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to, but I. <laughs> we have fun down there in healthcare, by the way. I know. It's busy, it's hectic, but we have, we have a lot of fun. Um, the, the, the toileting, the dressing, combing your hair, brushing your teeth. Now, that's not easy. Well, it's not easy if you've had a stroke. Your right hand doesn't work. And you see us down there doing different things, and it just seems like it's play. Or it's, why are you doing it? Well, everything has a reason. Everything has a specific, thought-out reason. So you see these people doing these little clips. Yeah, there's a reason for that. This right here is probably one of the most important things you can do. You use this for everything. Holding a pen, putting your key in the door, putting your key in the car. Maneuvering your belt. I won't, I won't do okay. maneuvering your belt. <laughs> Put your belt on. Put tying your shoes. Everything. Fine motor stuff. That's kind of what OT in general works on. Speech. Speech is a totally different ballgame from PT and OT. Um, <clears throat> and speech is probably the least understood. You know, oh, I'm fine. I can speak just fine. Speech does more than just working on somebody's speech, say, after a stroke. Okay. They also work on, and probably the majority of what they work on, is someone who's having swallowing problems. And there's a lot of reasons to have swallowing problems. It's not just, oh, they had a stroke. You see people have swallowing problems after they've had a hip surgery. Why is that? Well, for whatever reason, when they got intubated, it did something here. And they have all, all these little muscles. These are all little bitty muscles. And they can get weak just like anything else. Okay, and if you have swallowing difficulty, the real danger in that is, is that the whatever you eat or you drink doesn't go in the stomach, it goes in the lungs, which causes pneumonia. Okay, and that's not a game. Okay, and I'm uh, sorry if I'm being matched with the obvious, but uh, they work on swallowing. They also work on different cognition issues. 
a lot of times maybe somebody who maybe went under and they're just their processing is slow they're just not thinking normal and they know they're not thinking normal the speech will work with you on processing kind of getting your thought process back thought processes back and helping you and of course if you have unfortunately you know if you have some sort of stroke or whatever to help work on that now they also tend to tie that back into guess what safety <laughs> the speech therapy ties it all back over but when you stand up what do you need to do it all goes together so that's kind of briefly a differentiation of, uh, of PTOT speech now I briefly want to talk about Medicare A versus Medicare B and I've got uh, problem. John before we get into yeah. that I just want to um, so speech therapy is tied to uh, dietary yes so we do uh, barium swallows um, for many of our residents in healthcare. So after they do the swallow test, then a new diet may be ordered. You saw the front of the eagle, our puree food, uh, won national competition, first place. Um, so already works very closely with speech therapy in terms of, I don't know, we probably have 20 different diets, thick and liquids, nectar, honey, puree food, mechanical soft, um, no salt. And then water thickening. Salt, and water thickening and things like that. So that all flows together. Yeah, and, they're, yeah, and they work, like you said, they work, she works together with the dietary pretty much, I'd say almost daily. Can I ask if the barium swallow is done at healthcare? Yeah. We, you have to go <clears> on site. Like, we have a mobile unit that comes and parks in the parking lot. Um, so it's a, it's a, it's an x-ray uh, van. Wow. And so yeah, they. It's, it's literally an x ray. Uh, we get a little DVD of it so we can we can see it. Yeah. And it shows, in some cases, uh, structural restrictions like different, different yeah. bone spurs or different things. But it also shows where is the food going. Mm -hmm. It can also show, okay, the food is getting here and it's sitting here for a minute or 30 seconds before it goes. There's a delay. Uh, and again, I'm not a speech therapist, it's kind of a whole different ball game, but there's so many different things that that swallow study tells the speech therapist and us that uh, from there we can make a determination what is the safest diet. It would be inpatient in for that? Um, well, not necessarily. We, can, we, can, we have a contract with the company and we can call them. If you have a doctor's order, we can get it set up and they'll come and um, the uh, results are immediate. So they go, get into the van, it doesn't take long, get into the mobile van, and then we get the results. Sometimes we can, what we call upgrade diets. So if you're in healthcare, you may get several swallow studies, because maybe you start out pureed, but then you get better, you work with speech, and then you can go up, we'll do another swallow study, you can go up to mechanical soft, or regular liquids. Right, yes, so we monitor exactly that. Uh, that and they, they, when you're in there, it, like, it's less than 15, 30 minutes, something yeah. like that. But they're going to give you different consistencies of food and uh, different even consistencies of water so that they can see exactly what's going on. That may be more information than you need, but it's, it's good to know. Uh, hopefully you never need it, but we do do that. And we also do, uh, she also does speech uh, outpatient. We, we don't have a lot of it, but... We do have a few on the speech outpatient. Um, any other questions on that before I move on? I don't want to keep you all too, too long, but I, I can blabber on for a yeah. while. We also have x-ray that comes in and labs that come in, um, in addition to that. So if somebody has a fall or, you know, we can call the x-ray in. Um, they, the Dopplers are a little tricky, but uh, they'll come in and do an x-ray for us, and you don't have to leave the facility. <clears throat> and your lab work as well. Okay. Thank you. All right, real briefly, I want to touch on uh, Medicare A versus Medicare B. And I'm going to speak in generalities here, and, and I'm not going to tell you I am a Medicare expert. I am not. But on the therapy side, I, I know a little bit. <laughs> um, generally, when you come in, if you've been in the hospital for three or more days, you're going to, and you come down to uh, rehab, generally going to be covered under Medicare A. 
Again, you've got to have that three-day hospital stay, and you have to have a qualifying diagnosis. Um, John? Yes? Doesn't that have to be three midnights? I believe it, it's yeah, three, three midnights. midnights. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. The, the here to correct yeah. your stuff. Um, so when you come in, uh, downstairs, like I said, it's a little bit more intense. So you're going to be getting PT, OT, and if you needed speech, and you're going to be getting it minimal five days. Generally, most everybody down there gets it six to seven days. Every now and then, we're nice and give you a day off, but don't, don't, don't count on um, So it's more intense. Whereas outpatient up here, you're generally coming maybe for an hour, two or three days a week. Again, downstairs, it's all about function. Upstairs, outpatient, it's a lot more specific. It's a higher level. It's kind of the next step, if you will. So like for downstairs, like I said, we talk about function, function. Upstairs, it's kind of, we're finding tuning a lot of that. So you can walk 150 feet, but maybe we need, maybe you're still kind of dragging that foot a little bit. Or your, your gait step is like a two step, okay? We need to refine those certain things, specific muscle groups. Maybe you're dropping your hip, okay? So we need to strengthen a certain specific muscle because you're still at risk for a fall if you're not walking normally. But you don't need to be five days a week, okay? Uh, maybe you're recovering post-op, okay? You're able to do everything at home, but we still need to strengthen that specific muscle of the hip, the hip baby duck. I'm using that as an example. Maybe you had shoulder, uh, shoulder surgery, you've done well, you can do everything, but you still can only lift about 90 degrees. So you're raising this arm like this, and you're, this arm's like this, but well, we want to get them back to normal. Okay, it's a higher level. It's very much more specific, okay? And then as you go through that, the other thing we also have outpatient, we deal a lot more is with pain management. I'm assuming a few of you in here have pain. <clears throat> Whether it's in the back, shoulder, knee, we, we <laughs> you know, uh, so we, we see a lot of that upstairs, okay? You know, balance, pain, activity tolerance, all those type of different things. Vestibular even. Oh. Okay. Yes. And we have some amazing equipment up there. We have a, 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 <clears throat> excuse me, a treadmill that actually analyzes the way you walk. So when you're walking, you can see it on the screen that you're going this distance with this leg and only this distance with this leg. We have a Biodex balance machine up there that actually breaks down the different components of balance. It kind of breaks it down, the visual aspect, the vestibular aspect, the proprioception aspect. And so that we can get a, we, we can fine tune exactly, okay, where is the biggest deficit? I don't think your vision's okay, your vestibular's okay, your proprioception is not. So then we can uh, look at, okay, what are some compensatory methods that you can use to decrease your fall rates? You have to have a prescription. Yes, for all of these, you have to have a prescription from a doctor. Okay, did you have a question? Did you have a question? No, okay. Yeah, you have, for outpatient, you have to have a prescription from a doctor. Okay. Do I? Just don't waltz in. Yeah, well, you can waltz in, but we're going to tell you, oh, yeah, we're going to have a doctor order. So it you know, depends on who the doctor is, uh, it, that we can just call them up and get the order. But if it's somebody from like BAMSI or somebody different, like other than Soria or Mosmanis, then it may take us a little bit longer to get that order, or you may have to go get that order. Um, but generally, for most everybody here, you're going to have Medicare and TRICARE. Now, I want to get into something, and I'm not trying to get into an argument with anybody about anything, but I want to talk about Medi the Medicare, a lot of people are switching over to this Medicare, some of these Medicare Advantage plans, okay? We're starting to see more and more, okay? Um, Advantage. Some of this is, is my opinion, but it's, it's based upon having been here a long time and been dealing with this. And I think I can speak for everybody else in here in terms of uh, Steve and Bernie. And if, if you have regular Medicare and you have TRICARE, there's really no reason to get on a Medicare Advantage plan. They sell it. Oh, you're gonna get this. Oh, this will be cheaper. 
What they don't tell you is what you give up. Okay? And what you give up is control. It's great while you're well. If you come into healthcare, with Medicare, you have 100 days plus, if need, need be, you can go continue on TRICARE for life. When you sign up, expect on these Medicare Advance plans, they tell us how long you can stay. They dictate your care. I want to tell you something that just literally happened yesterday with a resident here. I won't mention who it is, obviously. Uh, she had just switched over to this Advantage plan. I'm not sure if it's a PPO or an HMO. And they say that these PPOs are not HMOs, and they're not, but they're still limiting. They're still not Medicare and tri But this person came in, she goes for therapy, came in, you know, oh, you know, she didn't have any medical. Okay, well, so then at that point, we have to stop. Okay, send you away. We can't make the appointment. We've got to call the insurance company and say, hey, uh, okay, this is the insurance, this is your policy number. Do we need pre approval? They have to give us permission to even start. The next thing we ask is, uh, what's the cover? What will you cover? So in this instance, uh, they told her that uh, they were going to charge her, and my numbers may not be exactly correct, but I'm pretty close. There's a fee of $69 a treatment session. So every time she comes into therapy, 69 bucks out of her pocket. And they were only going to pay 40%. So, she's not happy with us. But, you know, all, I, I can't change what the insurance policy says. I mean, you know, it's, man, all I can tell you is, you know, pick it up with you. your insurance carrier if you don't feel this is right. But not only that, now, if, I mean, she can see us, but it's going to cost a bunch of money that she shouldn't have to pay. Or he shouldn't have to pay. But they got to go somewhere else. And they can only go to the places that these people, they're in their little network. Now, that could be close. Could be over the medical center. I don't know. And they're all, all the plans are different. So, Sally's Fudge and Smudge's plan may be totally different than Harry Houdini's plan. So, I just, I'm saying this <coughs> because I, I don't want y'all to end up, and I'm not gonna, I don't even know how all it affects in healthcare on the, on the rehab side, but it affects that too. It basically says, they're, okay, we're gonna give you five days. <coughs> well, five days may not be enough. But generally, I, I think that they're, they're gonna send you to a different facility. Yeah, for the that's most part. a lot, yeah. Well, and, um, uh, we have now we understand that not all of you have Medicare and TRICARE and that you're a retired teacher or retired federal employee or something like that and so definitely we will work with you in terms of your insurance getting authorization and, and those kinds of things but those of you who do have Medicare TRICARE just keep that that is golden you have the best benefits of anyone in the United States if you have Medicare and TRICARE um, the one thing I was going to ask uh, John is, say you're in Part B, which is outpatient, how many visits are they allowed? I know there's some caps to this. That's a great question, I'm glad you asked that. Um, generally what we do when you come in, we do the evaluation and we certify that for 30 days. And in 30 days we're going to reevaluate. Now that doesn't mean we have to keep you on the whole 30 days, because if in two weeks you're better and just fine and no pain, we can discharge you. At 30 days, we're going to reassess. Okay, what's going on? It's pretty much the same downstairs, too. Every 30 days, we're reassessing. Is what we're doing working? Is there something we need to do better? It, have they improved to the point that maybe we need to up our goals? Okay. Now, there is a therapy, but back to what she was saying, there is a therapy cap, sort of. It's a quasi. There is this magic number out there. That Medicare sets and for whatever reason in their Medicare wisdom 
the they have physical therapy and speech in the same cap. Don't ask me why. And then OT has a separate cap. So once you hit, everything is paid based upon the number value that Medicare gives them. We don't like it to pick what we charge. It, it's, it's all set in stone, done by Medicare. Once you hit that cap, it's not a hard cap, but what it does is, Medicare looks like, ooh, ooh, they're going over that door. Maybe we need to take a closer look at this. So it increases, significantly increases the probability of an audit, okay? Uh, and if for whatever reason they decide this was not justified, then it can be kicked back. So we have to justify. Basically what I'm saying is we have to justify it to Medicare. Now, generally we really don't have any issue. With, we're tracking the dollars that you spend, so we know where most everybody's at, especially if they live here. But if you're going somewhere else, over at uh, Topper Line or something, and you hit that number already, and then you come over here, but we don't necessarily have a way of tracking that. You know, so we, we may ask you, have you been getting therapy somewhere else? Because Medicare is not going to just pay and pay and pay. You know, people think, well, I'll be on therapy for 12 months. That's not going to work. Medicare's not going to pay me. Get it back. Now, most of the time that we go over, we, have, we don't go over that cap very often. But when we do, it's generally because they've had a hip surgery on the right leg in February, and over here in October, oh, well, I got the other one done. Well, that's that's certainly justified to go over the cap. Now, we did recently. Was it this year that we got on it? Or last year. Anyway. last year, yeah. This year or last year? Anyway, we got audited. We, we got audited on Medicare B. It was a big deal. We sent it all in. And I'm happy to report we came out 100%. Which is pretty pretty rare because they're kind of picky. Oh, we're thinking tonight. That is tonight. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Is that, is that an annual cap or a. It's an annual cap. Okay. Yes. So, so it's so, so much. So January, like it starts over. It isn't a forever cap. Generally, now and once so if Medicare on um, Medicare A, let's say you use your hundred days and you need to continue, we can continue under Tricare for life. Medicare B doesn't work that way. If Medicare denies it, Tricare is going to deny it. Oh. Is that a, a fair yeah, assessment right. on the Part B side? Mm -hmm. um, so. As I had a resident tell me one time, Tricare for Life means therapy for life. Well, yeah, sorry to <laughs> burst your bubble, but no, it doesn't work that way. Um, the good news is, is that if you come to therapy, <coughs> and generally what we choose is we give you the beloved home exercise program. <laughs> yes. And we'd like to take you over to the other side and do that exercise program and go over it with you and go over it with you so that you can do it on your own. And I know y'all all, you give them, give them home exercise program. I know everybody here does it constantly, I mean, you know, faithfully. I'm not. <laughs> but, uh, but, you know, we, we give you the tools to be able to continue everything on your own. You don't need us anymore. Now, we're still there. Oh, you know, you don't have to be a patient to come walk in the room. Hey, I got a question about whatever. Right? Our door's always open. Okay. Uh, and if we don't know the answer, then we'll probably find the answer. Um, so back to the cap question. Yes, there is a cap. We are monitoring it. But we do have to be able to justify it. Uh, okay, any other what are well, let me ask you this. Yeah. What, what's the average time someone spends in Part B therapy? About For inpatient or in, uh, outpatient? For outpatient. Okay. For outpatient, I would say the average is probably right around 30 days. Okay. We have some people who maybe go, we have very, very few people that go past 60 days. Because you should be pretty, now there are 
certainly uh, instances where it's, it, it's that we do go past 60 days. I mean, number one, I give you the number one reason is shoulder surgery. The shoulders are the hardest rehab there is out there. And a lot of times they take longer time. Or, let's say they were on caseload, but they missed half of it because of some other illness. Now, at that point, we may discharge and pick them back up, or we may just, okay, we're going to add on. You know, really, in, in the way that our minds work, the way my mind works is, can I justify this to Medicare? And, and my mind goes, okay, is it easier for me to get up there and say, and justify, I need to keep them on, they need to stay on, or no, I can't justify it. And if I can say, you know what, I can look at this and go, yeah, I can justify it, over here. I don't know if that makes any sense or not, but that's that's the thought process. Mm -hmm. All right, John, what happens if you have your like hip surgery and mm -hmm. today's hospital, they're sending you home the next day, but they want you to go into um, the health care down here. What happens on cost on that without your three? Well, in that operation? specific scenario, mm -hmm. we would probably be trying to get the hospital to keep you three days. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. that but no, that would be... Um, during during COVID, we, we had a waiver of the three midnights, but that waiver went away May 11th. So if you go and have an outpatient surgery, practically, or if you stay one midnight and you need health care, that would be a private pay situation, and we would do Part B therapy in, in health care. Yeah, so in that case, you would be, the therapy would still be, we'd probably do three times a week under Medicare B, be covered by Medicare, TRICARE, all the therapy but you would still have the responsibility of the room. So then the question comes, you know, are you able to go home or do you need to be down in therapy? Is there, you know, I mean, do you need to be down in healthcare? Do you need that much assistance? Are you in that much pain? Is your blood pressure bothering you? Now, if all those things are going on, then you may need to go back to the hospital, but. Or if you're living alone. Or if you're living alone, exactly. And that's one of the things that we always look at in evaluation. Okay, where are you going back to? Do you live by yourself? Do you have, what's your support structure? All those things. So. But they go into private pay. <laughs> yeah, there's, you know, those are all, those standards are set by Medicare and there's really not a whole lot. We we don't have a lot of legal That was my question. Okay. And yeah. the three nights is really the key to going in on part A. Correct. Correct, it is. Yeah. 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 And and we're real healthcare is real good, nursing is really good about one. And, um, you know, we really we really need them to stay another night so that we can bring you in because it's so it, it's a big difference in what you have to pay, but it's also a big difference in the amount of therapy that you get. Yeah, You're talking about, yeah. you know, getting two hours, three hours a day versus two or three hours a week. Yeah. It's a big difference. We, and you we, know what? Yeah. So that you're, that's why we want you to know this. So that if you're in the hospital, you have control. You're the patient too, to a certain extent. Hey, wait a minute. No, you know, uh, I need to stay another night. I'm, I'm not ready, or, or whatever. You, you have some control over this. Some. I mean, I, I'm not going to speak for the hospital. Yeah, and like John said, when when they're calling us to get make a referral, and we you've only been there two midnights, <clears throat> we always advocate for you. Yes. And we'll say, oh, we don't have a bed. Or we, we, we can't take you until you know the third midnight's passed so we, we do that quite often and as far as the uh if you don't have the three midnight stay we that happens um and generally they stay maybe a week or two until they're ready to go upstairs on private pay we have yeah. no one that stayed for months on end no um, we really how many we have not had we have a one, huge I amount think. of number yeah uh where that happens, you know. Yeah. But some of it is, it's it's there for you. If hey, you know what? I'm pretty much doing it. You're doing everything on your own, but you're just not sure. That's okay. Yeah. That's okay. <clears throat> Another thing that it doesn't happen as much anymore, but some people go to the hospital and you're not admitted. Yes. You're under observation days, and that doesn't count as the as a uh, admission or a, a midnight. Yeah. Yeah. They, they used to do it a lot, but they have really haven't. They've gotten away from that. Yeah, that's been a real, or it was a real yeah. issue for a while. Where, oh, I've been in three days. Well, no, you were under observation for 24 hours. So, you know. But 
the point, I, I, you know, I want you all to be aware of it because if you're in the hospital, that you're aware of it, but I promise you, we're looking at it too. They're looking at it too. And again, I, I promise you, these people advocate, they advocate for you guys to try to make sure that you're coming in. Or they, because we want to give you what you need. We want what's best for you. Yeah. Burn. So on my education table, I have that pre-op um, form that flyer for this reason right here so that I'm aware and I can advocate for you and I meet with John and Suzanne every Monday Wednesday and Friday Debbie's Monday through Friday and we advocate to make sure that it's streamlined as much as we can for you all so I'm aware of it every morning at 7 30 when I come in I'm getting all my ducks in a row so I can give John that information so that we can take care of you and make sure your care is covered yeah, and I think that's a great point. Is is uh, it's a lot easier for the ARC for us to uh, advocate for you if we know what's going on beforehand. So. Any other questions? I know I think I was supposed to just only do thirty minutes. I'm gonna over five. That's pretty good for me. <laughs> I think I warmed it up in here a little bit too. I think I was. Does anybody have any other questions or anything? Um, yes. I'm sorry I'm talking a lot, but I want to say thank you for having these town halls mm -hmm. yes. and to please continue them we as we're always getting new residents in and having them videotaped now so that people can look at them on the TV or YouTube link. Um, you know, we've got to keep our folks educated. And right. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for yes. doing yes. this. So we don't care if you repeat this. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Well, is there any topic that we haven't covered that you're interested in? Anything? Assisted um, living is always closest to our hearts. Sure. Because that's probably the next step. Yes. yes. So more information on that is all okay. And the interface between the ARC and the VA. Is there any interface between the ARC and the VA? Well, we don't have a VA contract um, because those are, um, um, we don't really have a CND for a VA contract right now. Um, and they're very um, hard, they're hard to get. And they're, uh, there's a lot of documentation and review and the reimbursement's poor. It's not so. Yeah. So if you're in the VA hospital and you're discharged, the Medicare. Oh no, no, we take people from the VA. Okay. Yeah. So we have you have to be in the VA three days to get coverage. That's the same. Yeah. Same. Same. Same rule. Yeah. Same rule. Yes. Uh, my husband has been in the home health care for quite a while. He's been in and out, in and out, and I cannot thank you enough. For what you have done. Oh. However, uh, my biggest complaint, it's not with you, but I get calls from my husband's cardiologist, from his internist, from his uh, urologist, and on and on and on. And it seems like that I am the one that's coordinating what the doctors do. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, a case in point, my husband needs to get a battery in his pacemaker. Well, in order to get a battery, um, okay for the battery for the pacemaker, he's got to go through the cardiologist. So I called the cardiologist. I said, no, you need to call this cardiologist. And it's just crazy. So, you know. Yeah. Our, our, our nursing staff should be assisting you with that. And then we, we set up the transportation um, for him to go to get whatever he needs. So but in other words, when he, he needs to have a test done, say for example, over at uh, Methodist or something, I just go there and say, my husband needs to yes. be there at such and such a time, yes. and they take it's care of then, then we know, because what happens, sometimes families make appointments and we don't even know. I know, yeah. And we, you know, so yes, that, communicate with the nurses at the nurse's station, or tell Faye or Meredith or one of the staff so that we can get it scheduled and coordinated. All right, do the doctors usually go through me or go through you? Well, the doctors may, if, you know, like if you uh, had just went down to healthcare, the doctors aren't going to know that he's in healthcare. So they're yeah. going to probably call you first. Okay. Because yeah. they have no, especially, you know, somebody, they don't, they don't see them in, you know, once every six months or a year, they have, they have no way of knowing that they're in healthcare. So. Yeah. 
especially if you're in and out. And especially if you're in and out. Yeah. Yeah. But we can just let us know if somebody calls. Let us know. Come down to healthcare. Let the nursing staff know. We'll call the doctor. We'll get an appointment. We'll, we'll arrange transportation. We'll send the necessary information with him to the doctor. The doctor does his, his thing, and they send the information back. Because there might be in, uh, changes in orders and things like that going on. So um, our nursing staff should be coordinating with you. Thank you. Yes. And if you found any of this helpful, please pass it on to the other residents. We want them to know. You know, um, please pass it on. And, uh, you know, knowledge is power. We want you to, you know, uh, kind of have a good idea beforehand if you do need to go into healthcare, if you do need to go into rehab, or what do you need to do? Again, uh, our office is always open, our phones are always on. Uh, if you call me at three in the morning, we probably won't answer. But, um, <laughs> You know, we're here, we are truly here yeah, for you guys. I hear time and time again that you moved here for health care. You moved here to, to have therapy and to have all these things that we offer. So please, if you have any questions, we, we're always available. We'll continue to meet monthly. And um, if any of you have any topics you'd like for us to cover, we'll be happy to do so. Thank you.